Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in Freshman English. And I'm with you in your hymnals on page 614, 615. We're going to now turn to the other offering of Pat Mora, a voice. And here, notice at the very top of the page, we're told, in this poem, the speaker describes her mother, who as a high school student participated in a speech contest. So we're going to pay attention, and obviously you're going to have some questions as part of your independent practice. So follow along. Here we go. And then we'll come back to do our annotation. A Voice by Pat Mora. Even the lights on the stage unrelenting, as the desert sun couldn't hide the other students, their eyes also unrelenting. Students who spoke English every night as they ate their meat, potatoes, gravy. Not you. In your house that smelled like rose powder, you spoke Spanish formal as your father. The judge without a courtroom in the country he floated to in the dark on a flatbed truck. He walked slow as a hot river down the narrow hall of your house. You never dared to race past him to say, please move in the language you learned effortlessly as you learned to run. The language forbidden at home, though your mother said you learned it to fight with the neighbors. You like winning with words. You liked writing speeches about patriotism and democracy. You liked all the faces looking at you, all those eyes. How did I do it? You ask me now. How did I do it when my parents didn't understand? The family story says your voice is the voice of an ant in Mexico, spunky as a peacock. Family stories sing of what lives in the blood. You told me only once about the time you went to the state capitol, your family proud as if you'd been named governor. But when you looked around, the only Mexican in the auditorium, you wanted to hide from those strange faces. Their eyes were pinpricks, and you faked hoarseness. You, who are never at a loss for words, felt your breath stick in your throat like an ice cube. I can't, you whispered. I can't. Yet you did. Not that day, but years later. You taught the four of us to speak up. This is America, Mom. The undoable is done in the next generation. Your breath moves through the family like the wind moves through the trees. This is a compelling poem. Let's just annotate quickly. Obviously, you've got your guiding questions here that are working at figurative language at 20, and of course, word choice and connotation at 21 in the sound devices. What makes this poem so powerful is, of course, the line on page 614, down five stanzas. The family story says your voice is the voice of an ant in Mexico, as spunky as a peacock. Family stories sing of what lives in the blood. In other words, you are an extension of the people who raised you. Note the beauty of this poem. It says two things. Let's write it down at level 2A. One, this is a poem about how the child is able to overcome the challenges of the mom. She's making a tribute poem to her mother, and she's saying, I know you felt like you were a failure because you went to this poetry competition or presentation, and when you got up there and saw you were the only Mexican there, you were intimidated and you didn't talk. You thought you were a failure. But notice at the very end, she says, you didn't fail. Not that day. But years later, you were a success. Why? You taught the four of us to speak up. This is America, Mom. The undoable is done in the next generation. And there's, of course, your major 2A message. And then, of course, the notion of the blood, living in the blood. Notice the genius of this final stanza line. Your breath moves through the family like the wind moves through the trees. The power of this in terms of a powerful symbol. The voice is a symbol of what? Let's jump to 2B quickly. What is it that the voice is a symbol of? Well, it's a symbol of legacy, isn't it? That the things that you have were given to you in your blood and through the character of the people who raised you. And of course, she will write a poem to celebrate. You didn't fail that day, Mom. Rather, four children you gave the power of learning a language. At level 3A, let's ask this question. In what ways are you an extension of the things that you love the most, of the things that you've seen in your life? What is the text for you that celebrates most this notion of heritage? 
that you are given things by virtue of your upbringing. And then finally at level 3B, let's ask this question. To what degree are you an extension of the people who raised you, who gave you stuff? And to what degree have you told those people, thank you? Maybe a poem is in your future to say to those who raised you, thank you, you didn't fail. You gave me what I needed to keep going, even though it seemed like failure at the time. Well, there's our introduction to poetry and our unit number four. We now will turn to a series of poems and we will begin to address those here as we go forward. Thank you.